thing with this beautiful reference photo from Paint My Photos. It's a free website with great ideas. I used almost exclusively on this painting these Rosemary and Company Classic Long Flats. This is my favorite kind of brush to do clouds. You'll notice that the ends of these are slightly irregular. They're, I call it a little ruffled looking, but they're great for scrubbing into the canvas and getting a soft, irregular kind of look. You don't have to buy those, but just don't use something like something with a chiseled end or a razor sharp edge is not going to give you this soft kind of look. So see, look through your brushes and see if you can find something that's a bit worn and loved that might work. I'll also put a link in the description box below for the Rosemary & Company brushes I'm using. I found this really ugly painting that had been hiding in my basement for the last eight years and I decided to give it new life. I just put a thick coat of gesso over it and that's given me a fresh canvas. I really encourage you to give new life to paintings that just didn't work for whatever reason. I'm using a small round brush just to get the horizon line in and I've decided to put it extra low just because I wanted to give the sky predominance on this canvas and I'm just penciling in some trees just a super loose drawing. I couldn't find my yardstick so I'm just using a piece of molding and I'm going to start penciling in the angles that I want to place these clouds on to get them to go back to that vanishing point. I, I'll put a link in the description box below to a video I did called uh, the number one mistake people make when painting skies where I go into a little more detail how I put this in and paint on top of it. So be sure and check that out as well. You'll notice when you look at the original photograph, you can see where everything is kind of going back to a certain point and I'm just mimicking those angles. I love that little uh, slight turquoise look that's peeking through at the bottom of the horizon. And I had a tube color that I started using and started laying in, but I didn't like it. It just looked too bright and vibrant. So I ended up painting over it. So I'm not even going to tell you what that was, but I'm starting to lay in that color. And if you'll notice, I'm just being mindful of where my pencil lines are. They don't really show up. Uh, in this video, but you can tell from the angle that I'm just laying things in following that same angle. Now I'm looking back at my reference and just putting that color in in other spots where I see it peeking through the dark clouds. I'd rather have too much of that than not enough. You can always paint over it, but it just looks a little different when you have a color underneath and something going on top than trying to put it on top. I can't really explain that, but I like to get that undercoat, uh, the, all the color that I want, and then paint on top of it. Here I'm starting to add in some ultramarine blue to that turquoise color to get the next uh, deeper color as we move up the canvas because of course the sky is going to get darker as you move up. Adding some white to that just to soften it. I don't want it to look too stark or too dramatic. And again, I'm just looking at my reference photo and I'm looking at places where I see the sky peeking through those thick clouds and that doesn't have to be precise just trying to get a an area of color I'm going to be painting over most of that and I'm going to be painting around all those edges so I'm not spending too much time or overthinking that. Now I'm taking the tiniest touch of Naples yellow and I'm adding it to a lot of white and that's going to be that soft cream color that's going to be near the bottom. There's the tiniest touch of cad red medium, just to give a little bit of a glow to that. I ended up um, farther on in the painting adding more white to it because it just was reading too yellow. But um, Naples yellow and white is one of my favorite little glow colors. If you use something like cad yellow, it's going to be way too vibrant. 
Notice how I'm holding the brush. I'm, I'm not holding it like a pencil. I'm holding it very loosely. I'm getting very loose strokes. I don't have a lot of control over that brush. And that way I'm getting loose painterly strokes. And again, I'm just looking back at my reference photo. I'm looking every place where I see those lit up clouds and I'm dropping those in. And if you'll notice, I'm being mindful of those pencil lines that are keeping my clouds and the sky and everything in the right perspective. If I don't have those lines, it's just so easy to get off and things won't read correctly at the end. But this kind of helps me have a roadmap for where these clouds need to be dropped in. Here I'm taking ultramarine blue and burnt umber, which is a dark brown, and I'm mixing those together with a lot of white. And I'm going to get several piles of different values. And these are going to be the predominant color for our clouds. You notice that ultramarine has a purple uh, lean to it. So depending on if you add more brown, it kind of kills that blue. I like having a little more of the blue. But I'm doing a dark value, a middle value, and then a light value. And I really strongly suggest when you're doing a sky full of clouds to go ahead and pre-mix a lot of different piles because every time you look back at your palette, at least this works for me, every time I look back at my palette, I'm mindful of these different values. Here I've got some uh, golden open slow dry medium and I'm going to add that into each of my piles and just use a palette knife to mix those in. As I move farther on in the painting, I ended up just putting some of that slow dry medium in a pile on my palette and I'll dip my brush into it. So keeping your paints wet a little longer, again, helps soften. You know, with acrylic paints, sometimes you can end up with very hard looking edges. And I have found this to be uh, a good way to keep my clouds looking soft. Here I'm using one of these Rosemary and Company brushes and I'm dipping into the deepest value and I'm just looking at my reference photo. I'm looking where the real dark spots are and I'm just loosely putting that in. I'm not overthinking it. I'm not uh, being super careful about it. I'm just, you know, clouds and skies, if, if it's a little different from your reference, that's probably better. Don't, don't be a slave to your photograph. And sometimes you have to just put in what looks right. Sometimes I have to veer away from the photograph because for whatever reason, it's not translating well onto my painting. So use it as a reference, but don't be a slave to it. You'll notice I'm staying true to my lines, going back into that darkest value again. here you'll see me just continuing to add in different values. I'm being mindful of my lines and just staying true to that rough drawing that I put in at the beginning, not being a slave to it, but just being mindful where those lines are. You see me painting over a lot of that turquoise. Again, it's just going to peek through in some places and that's why I wasn't too concerned about getting all that in just right.
Here I'm adding some Naples yellow to that ultramarine and burnt uh, umber mixture with some white just to give us a, a warmer gray tone just to give some variation up in the sky where it gets a little lighter. I wanted it to read a little warmer. I think a mistake we can make when we're doing skies is not having enough variation in value and color so that it ends up looking very flat because clouds really do have shape and form to them and the more you can give expression to that with varying your values and adding some different colors in I think you're gonna feel like that sky has more movement and volume to it. If you're doing a stormy sky, don't be afraid to go ahead and get some super dark values in there. Be brave. <laughs> Here I'm redoing that turquoisey area and I used cobalt blue and a touch of Naples yellow and a lot of white and that makes a beautiful more natural looking little turquoise part of the sky. I decided before I put in the second coat of the sky, it would help a lot to just get a little feel for what that uh, foreground was going to look like. And it really helps put things in perspective. I'm doing the trees and the little background trees using sap green and Naples yellow. And in the foreground where it gets a little brighter, I use some cad yellow medium mixed in with that sap green. Now that I have the initial block in of the sky, I'm going back in with my Naples yellow and white mixture and I am barely scrubbing the canvas. I'm really letting the texture of the canvas just pull some paint off my brush. I'm doing this with a very light hand, just getting in some thin uh, wispy clouds down near the bottom. I'm being careful not to use too thick of a paint. Got some green on there by accident. And just Again, I'm putting very little pressure on that brush, just going back in, reestablishing some areas that need to be brightened up a little bit, trying to keep the shapes irregular. You don't want something that's just looks like a, a round circle or something, just trying to keep it very organic looking. And burying the, the thickness of the paint, that's important. So you have some areas that look more wispy than others where you can see the cloud behind it shining through. Some are, are thicker paint. You may also need to go back in and reestablish some darks. If, if you know, it's one thing I love about acrylics. You can keep going over it and over it. If something's gotten too light, darken it up. If it's too dark, lighten it up. And I'm softening all those edges. Every place where you see a little bit of a sky hole, I'm just um, going back in, trying to soften those edges, blur it a little bit. Sometimes you will have a real distinct line within clouds, but most of the time it's fairly soft and blurred. So I'm just kind of finessing that. Again, you can tell that I have kept those lines, although of course they're covered up by now, but you can see there's a definite direction of these clouds and it's helped me not lose that perspective. Holding that brush very loosely, not holding it like a pencil, lightly scrubbing in. 
varying those marks. I'm not doing it like just in straight lines. I'm moving it around a little bit because I'm painting something that's very organic. I want to make sure that my, my brush strokes look organic. Here I'm going in with just some pure white and scrubbing that in. I, you know, I often will just mix something on the canvas once you get to this stage, so don't be afraid to do that. And while the yellow gives it a glow, the white makes it feel like the, the sun, it's really lit up and brilliant. So I'm, I'm just burying that a little bit, again, lightly scrubbing. softening those edges. So you see that I've got some places where the paint is thicker and then the paint is thinner because clouds appear thicker in spots and then more wispy and vaporous in others. So it's important you don't want everything looking like the same thickness or, or opaque or transparency. Here I'm pushing that paint out into the blue edge, just softening that, getting a little wispy look outside that hole. Just lightly scrubbing that in. Very little paint on my brush at this point, just really kind of scrubbing off the tiny bit that's on there. That's keeping it nice and thin and airy looking. And just trying to keep everything organic and natural looking. Try to keep the shapes varied. I don't know about you, but I have to be really intentional not to get into a pattern with things. So I have to really work at keeping things so they don't look so monotonous or um, predictable. Dropping a little of that up in the dark again. Again, I think the more that you can add some layers. I love if I'm painting flowers or skies or anything else, I think the more layers that you have, the more interesting it is, the more colorful, the more painterly it is. I just, I just love uh, going back with, with lots of layers. I'm using that lightest blue-gray value and I'm very lightly scrubbing it on top of some of those kind of cloud holes and I'm very little paint on the brush, very light touch. I'm just wanting to leave a very soft, hazy deposit in some of those areas. Again, that just lightest value going over some of the darker areas. Just giving dimension, letting, letting you see that they're highs and lows, they're raised places, they're low places within those clouds. If you get it too light, drop some dark back in and, and vice versa. See how wispy and soft it's getting. It's just the, the more that I worked with it, I felt like it was just getting softer and better. Here I've dropped down to a much smaller brush and I'm taking that lightest value of the gray and I'm dropping it in on top of dark places. And I have very, very little paint on the brush and you can see I'm scrubbing it fairly hard at this point. I'm, I'm not trying to leave a lot of paint, I'm just trying to leave a thin, wispy vapor, just super soft. And it may not look like much is happening to you with this. But this is the kind of thing that's really going to make those clouds look believable. It's going to make it look like there's some haze and thin clouds, and it's going to give some atmosphere to your painting. It's, it's worth the time and effort to do it. Oh, 
I always like to get back from a painting at different parts during the process and just see what's working, what's not working. Is anything jumping out to me? Does anything look odd? And there's, there are a couple of things that I'm not crazy about. And one is this super straight line. Um, I thought in my head, that's how the photograph read, but as I've looked back, it's actually much softer. So I'm gonna work on that. And this is kind of a good teaching point. Even if this did look like the photograph, if it's jumping out to you and you don't feel like it's working, then do something else. The other thing that I'm noticing, I, I like that you get this sense of movement. I like that this looks closer than this. But in the photograph, you see a very slight billowiness of some of the clouds where these are all running pretty flat there actually should be a little billow billowness is that a word billowy billowiness <laughs> fluffy we need to see something fluffy on the tops of some of these clouds but we need to make sure that it's just slightly lighter than the cloud itself it it needs to be very subtle if you go in and put a, a white little fluffy cap on that it's really gonna it's just not going to read correctly. So I'm going to go back through and using a soft brush again, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put in some kind of rounded strokes. I don't want it to be um, predictable, but I'm just in places, I'm going to put a little bit lighter value with a little roundness to it and see if I can't get a more billowy look. So um, I'll let you see. So I've gotten back from it again. I've added a lot of little uh, billowy places, which I think made a huge difference. I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I added a little bit down here. I softened that black line a little bit. Um, I added a little more highlight up in here. So overall, I'm real pleased with it. And it's interesting though, because I love color so much and I was very purposeful keeping good color harmony in this sky but i feel like a little more color could be a little more interesting so i think i'm gonna try making a little bit of purple using ultramarine blue uh, which leans purple anyway and adding just a little drop of alizarin crimson or cad medium and some white and maybe just trying adding that maybe just introducing and put a lot of white in it because i don't want it to jump out but i just feel like it's so much the same color. I, I just feel like it can maybe be a little more interesting dropping in a, a third color. If it doesn't look good, we can always just paint right over. That's what I love about acrylic. So that's what I'm gonna try next. So I put the tiniest bit of cad red medium 
in with the ultramarine blue and then added a lot of white and that's that was that which is a little dark but this is with more white and I think that's really pretty I think that's given us a little more color uh, without distracting from the painting and I'm going to drop some up in the painting as well that might be a little too too light so I can darken that back up a little bit I think that's pretty just getting a little hit here and there so um, I've dropped down to a much smaller brush I am barely putting any pressure on this and I'm letting the texture of the canvas grab the grab the brush I'm, I'm doing little circle motions barely putting any pressure on there so what you can do here you see I have the darker and the lighter purple you can put the lighter right on top of that and the bottom will read like a shadow and if it's too dark you can just go over it but I like these little kind of like a little fleck here and there rather than everything being so symmetrical and um, yeah I think that helped a lot I'm gonna just soften this edge with a little more purple and I don't want it purple is not my favorite color I, I see why artists paint with it so much um, it's not a color I have in my house or that I wear or anything so I don't want to and I think there's a lot of other people who feel the same way and can get turned off to something because of the purple but sometimes it's a way of just getting some color back in um, keeping everything from looking so heavy just to get kind of some liveliness in there so I'm, I'm liking that uh, I'm just gonna put a tiny little touch here and there and then I'll let you see again I think adding that slightly red or purple at the bottom made a lot of difference it just softened up that horizon so I'm really pleased with this you're probably watching this because of the sky and not the landscape but um, I'm going to go back over the landscape just get a second coat on there I don't know that I'm going to put the barn in I'm going to make a decision about that but uh, I don't want to bore you with watching me put a second coat on everything I had originally thought I would make these trees more defined but I don't mind them being so um, super super loose so I'm gonna see I might clean them up just a little bit but I love the looseness of this painting and don't want to lose that stay tuned so I left the small trees in the background pretty much like they were but I built up the trees in the front then I figured out I was going to do the barn and I figured out where the top of that would go and I just put in a super simple roof super simple frame I didn't even try to put doors or windows in it at all I used our same cad red medium and I used the complement which is sap green to gray it down and I thought it ended up being a beautiful red here I've added some tree trunks and some more texture and I put some nice shadows on top of the barn to look like that foliage was in front of it and I was real pleased with how that little area of the painting turned out I appreciate you coming along with me on this sweeping sky painting I hope you learned some tips and tricks I'm hoping to do a full course later in the year on skies and clouds haven't started it yet but hopefully that'll be coming up with even more instruction and more real-time instruction so be sure and sign up for my YouTube channel make sure you don't miss any more of the free information and I'd love for you to check out my website where I have some very inexpensively priced courses and tutorials I'm raising money to build water wells by my painting sales and would love for you to check out paintings that I have available. Thanks a lot and God bless.